When this cheetah delivered a record five cubs, it was supposed to be a day of celebration. However, a surprise left the entire staff screaming and catapulted the zoo into the international spotlight. At that moment, the team was nervously watching over the young vet's big moment. Hunched over the security camera monitor, they were equally fearful for their colleague and the health of the cubs. This was a crucial moment. Taking a deep breath, the vet readied himself and began moving slowly into the small enclosure, keeping his eyes fixed on the cheetah. The big question on everyone's mind was how Milani would react to the vet's approach. When approached by humans, cheetahs that have given birth typically respond with defensive behaviors. They become highly vigilant and protective of their newborn cubs, growling, hissing, or baring their teeth to deter potential threats. Additionally, everyone at the research center knew Milani was not the most easygoing cheetah, especially during her pregnancy, which in itself was one of the many shocking occurrences in the life of this unique cheetah. Rescued from the clutches of poachers in her native Namibia, Milani was a one-of-a-kind cheetah at the Metro Richmond Zoo, a world-renowned hub for cheetah research. Establishing the Cheetah Conservation Center there, teams of vets monitored the health, socialization, and population numbers of the cheetahs. Over the years, hundreds of experts had collaborated with the program in an effort to boost the population. But for the time being, their dire hopes all rested on a single female cheetah, Milani. She was aging rapidly, and if she didn't give birth soon, it would be a big blow to their repopulation efforts. Aside from Milani's age, she was hard to please. Six male cheetahs were interested in Milani, but she stubbornly ignored their advances. They would make a trademark barking noise, only to be met with indifference as Milani barely glanced in their direction before returning to her enclosure. Rather than seeking male attention, Milani preferred to spend time on her own, surveying acre after acre of grassland. There was no shortage of fans for the beautiful cheetah, who had become a huge attraction for researchers. She was as majestic as they come, her yellow skin a smooth canvas, punctuated by black dots of varying shapes and sizes. Her elegant, slender limbs allowed for lightning-quick speeds in the blink of an eye. Whenever she quickened her pace, Milani sliced through the air, shifting directions with exceptional agility. Researchers caught glimpses of Milani in action, scaling trees or creeping through bushes, perfectly adapted for hunting prey and earning her the title of an apex predator. But none of that really mattered because Milani was just too picky to choose a mate. Though she may have safety guaranteed now from poachers, Milani's biggest threat was going to come from inside her own body. After years of isolation, the zoo's vets finally had a clear opportunity to encourage Milani to mate. It was a new arrival, Bo, who showed promising potential. He was also from Namibia, and the animal rights group delivering him speculated that Bo and Milani may have encountered one another before at a similar age. They had likely been part of interconnected families. As usual, Zookeepers allowed them to spot each other from a distance. Strolling up through the field towards the new arrival, Milani remained hesitant and unsure at first, watching him from afar. But suddenly, it was clear that Milani recognized him. Sauntering over and letting out a barking noise, Bo gave the signal that he wanted to breed with Milani. This was never the issue for Milani, though. He was in her territory, and it was up to her to decide. Surprisingly, she didn't put up much resistance rubbing her head against his large, thick body. She greeted him with affection like no cheetah had shown at the zoo before. The research team then waited in suspense, not only for mating but over the next couple of days when it was confirmed Milani was pregnant. The interaction seemed natural, but behind the scenes, months of planning and research had gone into maximizing the two mating. Experts had different opinions on the best methods to create a conducive environment, and Bo was specifically chosen for Milani. In the end, their efforts paid off, but that was only the beginning of more surprises to come. It was big news, any contribution to the cheetah population was monumental. With an ultrasound, something else was revealed too. Five cheetahs were growing inside her, which soon ballooned her stomach wider than ever before. As quickly as the excitement spread through the community, veterinarians became worried. The mood of celebration was quickly replaced by fear. The likelihood of all cubs surviving and Milani pulling through unharmed was very low. Milani's stomach had been injured from her time in captivity, with a large gash running from her chest down. The surface wounds had largely healed, but internal damage remained. It wasn't clear whether she would be able to support five cubs at once. As the birth neared, the five cubs were pressing heavily against her intestines, making it difficult for them to function properly. Facing a dilemma, the research team decided not to intervene. 
The risk of childbirth was well considered, but the future of the species lay in the hands of facilities like Metro Richmond Zoo. For now, Shivas in the wild didn't stand a chance. In the last century, the population had dropped by over 90%. It had taken years for Milani's first pregnancy. If they terminated now, then who knows how long it would be before the next one. After many long meetings, the team decided that it was worth the risk. They would remain vigilant, though, if they needed to intervene. With each passing week, the pregnancy became more dangerous. Moved into a smaller enclosure, Milani was now given round-the-clock attention, surrounded by state-of-the-art equipment. Researchers were forced to make their assessments from a distance. All the while, they could see that Milani was visibly growing weaker, at times even refusing to eat. She became more aggressive too, wary of humans and on edge. One day, as a zoo staff member was feeding meat to her, she charged, climbing at the fence and sending the man stumbling backward, clambering back into the truck. The increasing pressure and stress were taking a toll on the fragile condition of Milani's pregnancy. This had never happened before, and it was by far the closest she had ever come to actually attacking anyone. Milani was now considered a high-risk animal that needed to be handled with extreme caution. There was now an added danger to the pregnancy. How would zookeepers be able to help her if she wouldn't let them get close? Even after years of time to bond, Milani still didn't trust them. Zookeepers worried that she might never recover from her traumatic time in Namibia. For her, they resembled the poachers who had taken her family with their tools and jeeps. This would soon become a life-threatening matter for Milani. Nervousness intensified as the birth date approached. A round-the-clock surveillance effort was in full swing, meaning they would be prepared at any moment. Days before the birth, a small enclosure was built for Milani adjoining her usual area. It was a dark box, just 18 feet long and 6 feet wide. She was puzzled by the area for now, but it wouldn't take long for her to become well acquainted with it. Around 4 in the morning the following day, while it was still pitch black and silent outside, feeling the contractions beginning to ripple through her body, Milani crept towards the box. The team was watching anxiously through a live cam in case anything went wrong. Milani first struggled to get comfortable, standing up and sitting down repeatedly with impatience. No matter how she tried, she was unable to find a comfortable position. Contractions grew closer, and Milani's body continued to push, heaving on the inside while she remained calm on the surface. With her final push, a tiny cub dropped out from behind her, landing softly on the hay below, wriggling around but barely conscious. The senses of the world filled its eyes and ears while it grappled with the new movement of its body. The surveillance room erupted with celebration, but it was quickly dampened by the realization that they were only a fifth through the ordeal. Half an hour later, a second baby popped out from Milani. The interval between each birth widened, and the mother was growing tired. It was dark when she first went into labor and crawled into the enclosure. By the time the third cub emerged, sunlight was illuminating the bodies of the small creations, slowly coming into greater focus under the watchful eye of the team. Milani reserved the last of her energy to carefully inspect each cub, licking, prodding, and poking at them, making sure they were healthy. They wasted no opportunity to snuggle up to their mother. When the final cub came into the light, there was a final round of cheers from the team. What they didn't know yet was that this final cub would make them scream. Now came the most difficult and most important part. The moment of truth had arrived, and one vet was headed into the enclosure to check on the cubs personally. The vet chosen already had a good report with Milani, but he was a young man who was not that experienced, and waves of fear came over him as he sheepishly entered the enclosure. How would Milani react to his approach? Would she go into full defense mode and attack the young man? Milani locked eyes with the vet, uncertainty hanging in the air. It was the young vet's first encounter this close to a cheetah, let alone a cheetah that had just given birth. The experience was a stark contrast to feeding from a distance. Nervously watching over this young vet's big moment, the rest of the team hunched over the security camera monitor, fearful for their colleague. With a deep breath, the vet readied himself and began moving slowly into the small enclosure, keeping his eyes fixed on the cheetah. Remembering that weeks earlier Milani had been so protective of her food that she'd charged one of the zookeepers, there was no telling how she would react to an intruder coming dangerously close to her newly born cubs. Milani kept a watchful eye on the strange intruder but then shocked everyone by rolling over, revealing her five cubs snuggled in a ball underneath her. Seeming to understand why the vet was there, she opened the cubs up for inspection, relaxing her body and taking a moment of rest. 
Breathing a sigh of relief, the vet got to work. First, he checked on Milani, especially her stomach injury, but she seemed to be unharmed, only exhausted. Picking up each cub with gloved hands individually, the vet used his bag of tools to run some vital tests, a small scale, tubes for samples, and a small flashlight to check the responsiveness of their eyes. Collecting all the data he could, the vet hurriedly packed his bag and took samples back to the lab. But he could already tell that things were not good. The fifth cub didn't seem to have a healthy weight, and its head was larger than usual, making its body appear tiny in comparison. Results came back confirming that the youngest was suffering from a birth defect. Time was critical now, and the team needed to move fast, but before they had time to act, the cub's condition deteriorated. It was having difficulty breathing. The young vet rushed into the enclosure. There was no time to seek approval from Milani. Luckily, she was resting in a deep sleep after her ordeal. He grabbed the cub and took it to a medical tent next door, crying out to the other staff that they were losing him. Resuscitations, injections, and a defibrillator. Every possible measure was taken, but sadly, every attempt failed. The tiny cub was barely hanging on to life. There was no way for its condition to improve. The surveillance room grew silent, and with heavy hearts, the decision was made to euthanize the young cub to avoid any further suffering. Milani knew something was wrong but was too weak to react. She seemed to accept her loss. The good news was that the four other cubs were incredibly healthy. Vets stepped in from time to time and offered bottled milk, ensuring that all the cubs received enough nutrients. What once would have been a daunting task soon became a fairly straightforward procedure. Milani was hesitant at first, fearful of losing yet another cub, but feelings were always led by the same young vet, who worked slowly and calmly to reassure her every step of the way. After more than seven years, Milani was at last warming to her zookeepers, becoming less aggressive, and, at times, even offering a soft bump of the head. The zookeepers were thankful that Milani was responding so well and were still in awe of the miracles she had performed. But what the introverted cheetah was about to pull next would simply blow their minds. And not just theirs, but Milani would be making international news too. Two years later, during a particularly hot summer, lightning struck for a second time. Milani again became pregnant, to the delight of zookeepers. This time was very different, though, she wasn't alone. Milani was one of three cheetahs pregnant at the zoo, all conceiving at nearly the same time. This was going to be chaotic for the zoo staff, who were already short-handed when they dealt with Milani's pregnancy. And there was another problem, Vela, Vila, along with another female, Wei, were both first-time mothers. While Wei had been relatively disciplined, Vila proved to be a handful, becoming fierce and standoffish as her pregnancy progressed. She would snarl and growl at the zookeepers as they passed by, once even scratching another female unprovoked. Having been through this before, Milani was ready to offer a helping hand to the zookeepers. She was ready to restore order. As the bigger and older female, she commanded respect and used her power to control the others. The next time Bella snarled at a zookeeper, Milani let out an explosive yelp, sending shockwaves through the air. Everyone froze, including the zookeeper and Vela. Milani had never been so aggressive to another cheetah before. Her mouth stretched wide, showing her teeth in a display of dominance, sending Vela scurrying away. This was a first warning, and, because of its ferocity, Vela didn't need a second. Over time, she learned that the zookeepers were there to assist her, and she reluctantly fell into line, afraid to anger Milani again. But even Bella's discipline wasn't going to be enough to help the zookeepers. The problems were much bigger than that. Even though the cheetah team had expanded with almost double the number of staff, it still wasn't enough. They were managing three pregnancies at once, setting up three separate enclosures and preparing for possibly more than 10 cubs. All hands were on deck. The once junior vet who had helped with Milani was now the leader of one of two teams, directing surveillance, health checkups, and assisting with the births. For two weeks, he barely had any time off and could often be seen sleeping at the zoo. But he was committed. With resources stretched thin, there was no room for error. Personally, the young vet was keeping an eye on Vela, the fierce first-time mother. It wasn't her personality he was worried about, though. Ultrasound scans had revealed that she was pregnant with seven cubs, making it dangerous for both her and the cubs. He didn't want to lose another cub but knew that the odds were stacked against them. Once again, the young vet watched on with anxiety as Vela went through the same steps as Milani. He was the one who entered the enclosure, administering the tests that would tell them the situation. 
Tragically, history repeated itself. Not one but two cubs didn't make it, both suffering from similar breathing problems. Feeling guilt and despair, the team was consoled by the fact that they did their best. In fact, across the three pregnancies, they had overwhelming success. In just 11 days between March and April, all three pregnancies came to term, delivering 13 cubs in total. Wei welcomed five cubs into the world, while Milani added three to her small family. Considering the fact that the cheetah population is in critical danger, facing a rapid decline with only 7,500 remaining in the wild, the addition of these 13 cubs was a great victory, one of many that was still to come. The surge in cheetah cub births brought newfound nationwide attention, donations, and fundraising to the conservation center. A new program initiated an annual Run Wild race at the zoo to raise money, and all the hard work continued to pay off. Years later, they broke their own record by delivering 19 cubs within the span of a few days. The number of cheetahs born on site over the past decade reached an impressive total of 90, marking a significant milestone in improving the species' classification from vulnerable. And it all started with Milani. Though she's likely too old now for another pregnancy, Milani has her hands full taking care of seven cubs who are growing rapidly. Since her first birth, she's developed a new trust for the zookeepers, allowing them to get close and even cuddling at times, making the years of hard work worth it. What an incredible story! If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. See you in the next video!